Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, we all know Blender 3.0 has been released and this comes with a couple of improvements. We've talked about this in case you haven't seen this video. Link is going to be in the description, an end note and also a card just in case you would like to follow through. And this release did come with some beautiful things and we've also gone through and talked about most of them. Like, we talked about cycles, which we're going to do a whole new video about. And then we talked about the idea that, you know, we have some updates to cycles and asset browser. Now, today we're going to focus on the asset browser. Talk about how you can work with the asset browser, how you can create your stuff and how you can actually make them work with Blender. At the same time, you know, share up a couple of tips and tricks and how you can get things going. So with that said, for those who like to test out the asset browser, you like to play with it, they do have a download file that you can get and you can also use this and start doing some impressive things. Now, if you click on that link, it will take you right here where you can download a couple of asset demos. And for this particular one, we'll be focusing on the asset browser that deals with how you can create assets and also how you can work with them. And of course, there's also the post library, which we're going to talk about in a different video. So for you to download this, if you click on this button, it will take you over to this page. Now, in most cases, you think it's going to go ahead and download but it wouldn't okay that is one thing most of you guys might have experienced you click on that button it brings you here you don't see anything nothing downloads what you need to do is scroll all the way down and you would notice that you have it right here this is where the download is just in case so once you download that you need to file blender 3.0 and simply open up the file so once you open up the file this is what you get very easy to work with very impressive a huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for making this. And it is very simple. You know, I love the idea that you can click, drag, and you notice that we have the grid that simply snaps onto surfaces, which is brilliant. And you can just drop it. And that is how you create stuff right now. Click, drag, and drop. And then you can rotate this however you want. And for sure, if you like to move this, you can just simply move it. And if you like to scale it, you can also just simply go ahead and you know, tap S on the keyboard and scale this. For those who like to add more stuff, you can also go in and click and drag. And the idea here is for you to reuse your content and create things faster. So with a scene like this, you can see how quickly you can just simply start moving things from an asset library that you've made previously. And it just simply makes sense. So for you to apply textures or play with textures, you need to save these things in a given file. And for sure, you can simply click drag and apply this and automatically that simply applies so the question is how then do you create yours and of course what kind of asset does this support this simply supports almost every kind of thing in terms of textures materials 3d assets light and so on and so forth but let's talk about how you can create yours how you can create yours is extremely easy now it's worth knowing that when you would like to create any asset library in this case whether it's a pack of cigarettes or maybe you're trying to create a pack of chairs or, you know, you just want to mix up a lot of assets that you can reuse every single time. It makes sense to save these things in a given folder. Now, once you save them in a given folder, you can also choose to re-reference this in a different project altogether. Now, we're also going to talk about that. But right now, let's talk about how you can make some quick stuff. Now, if, for example, you want to create something as easy as several rocks, you can make rocks very easy in Houdini. In Houdini, you create a geometry, throw in a sphere, throw in a mountain node and you can play with the parameters in terms of amplitude and all that you can play and create different variations now if you're also doing the same thing in blender you might want to go through the geometry node route but you know this is also something that is for creating hyper faster stuff so the reason why we are actually referencing these in hindsight is so that you can also be able to tap into the advantage of working with geometry nodes to create assets and not limit yourself by modeling these things every single time. So back here in Blender, we're just going to go ahead and create a pack of primitive. Actually, let's do even some more crazier stuff so I can select this and jump over to what we have as our edit. Tap three on the keyboard, select this. Let's, you know, just go in. Let's just go in and scale this all the way in and put this down. Okay, so we would like to create an asset of these three things you know let's actually push this even more so let's even make it more crazier by making a copy so let's hit shift and d on the keyboard and move that right here and just like we mentioned earlier let's see if we can make 
some rocks. And for this one, we would need to launch our geometry node. So geometry node makes sense. It's beautiful. We have it here. So what we can do is just pretty simple. So we can just do a subdivision surface, drop that in. And then we can, of course, use Arendelle's utility. So I think Arendelle utility does have a, a couple of things. I guess that is called displacement noise. I guess that, well, yeah, so that's it. And we can also make another uh, version of this. So let's just copy and paste that there. And you can see it. And by the way, for those who will be thinking about getting Arendelle's utility node, if you go over to his page, you will be able to get it it's uh, it's right here pretty cool stuff so with this now we can start creating a huge set of rocks so let's say we're going to drop the scale down let's just drop that scale down to something like that and we might also want to play with the strength just a little bit so once we have that we can make different variations of it by just playing with the attributes and also playing with the parameters that exist within the node and once this is done we can now proceed to save our file and then convert certain parts of this file to become assets that would exist within the asset browser. Now, the same thing happens for materials. We're also going to go ahead and create different sets of materials and then select them, right click, mark them as assets. And these would also be saved in the library. And depending on the number of things you would like to make, you can categorize all of these things and put them into different sections. So with all your assets here, you would notice that if you go over to the asset browser by simply going over to your sub menus and clicking on asset browser or hitting shift F1, you would see that we have everything here, you know, including the light, we have it right inside here. And this simply means that if you even create a given kind of light, in this case, let's say we create an area light, for example, and I move this area light all the way up and probably you already have a given set and you love working with this set all the time, the area light is also going to be saved. So if you have a setting kind of light system that you always like to work with, you can also save these things and right click and hit on Mac as asset and you can see that appearing here. This is very impressive and again, it even becomes more impressive with the idea of catalog. Now, if you look at the asset browser properly, you will notice that we have the current file and user library. Now, how you can fix this current file to look even way cleaner is like this. That you can click on the plus sign, go over to the catalog. And for this one, I'm just going to call this rocks and just simply keep them as rocks and then click on the plus sign as well and double click and call this prims. And you know, short form for primitive. I can also click on the plus sign and double click right here and also tag these ones as lights. And finally, click on the plus sign and call these materials. All right, so once I have all of this ready, I can also click and drag to transfer any of these from one point to another. And in this case, if you like to have your materials under the rocks, you can do that. If you also like to have the primitives under the materials or maybe under the rock, depending on how you like to work, you can do that. But then you would also notice that none of these things follow through because from these parts, all these things are left the way they are. So for us to actually put things in perspective, we need to go to the all section, select the primitives that we want. So in this case, we're selecting one, two and three. Let's see, do we have more? And I think we don't have. So we just have one, two and three. I guess we also have one more, which we haven't actually made. So I don't think we made the torus. So I'm just going to right click mark as asset and have that there. So we can have one, two, three and four and simply click, drag and drop them within the primitive. And once I do that, if I click on the primitive, you can also see that right here. So we're also going to do the same thing for the rocks, which are currently called spheres. I'm just going to click, drag and drop that directly under the rocks, click on the rocks. And now you can see we have the rocks and then we have the primitive. And of course, we can do the same thing for the lights and also for the materials. So I can just do that, drop this right in there and then select the materials that we have here and drop them right there. Now, once you have all of these things ready, you can now proceed to even edit them. So what do I mean by this? If we go in and select the cube, which we have here, and then for some reason, we choose to manipulate this cube. Let's jump into the edit. And then uh, let's see, what can we do with this? Let's say we select a given part, we'll select this part, for example, and we're just going to insert like we did for the previous one. And in this case, we can also extrude like we did for the other one. And if you look at this, you would notice that it still stays the same. Once we have this done, you may not notice, but that has automatically been updated. 
So the same thing can apply to every other part. So how do you know if I click and drag out, you can now see that we have this here. I mean, you can also proceed to do some more stuff with this done. If we click and drag as well, you would notice that automatically that has also been updated. We can also click on the gear icon, which would bring up certain places where you can add tags. So you can add tags to this in terms of, you know, we can go in and just call this a cube, for example, and click the enter key, click right here, double click and add another tag, a box, for example. And we can also go in and, uh, you know, throw in whatever we want. We can call this a square and that way we've added tags to this. Now, if you also go all the way up, you would notice that we have a preview section. And once we click on the refresh button, you would notice that the preview updates to the brand new preview that we have. Now, if you also have a given preview, you can load up a custom image that you can use to drive this. Now, once you have all of these things ready, you can now proceed to save your file. So we can go over to file, click on save and save this file. So in this case, I'm just going to save these as test underscore and save the Blender file. Now, once we save this Blender file, we can now launch a brand new scene go over to edit go over to the preference click on file part and then click on the plus sign and open up the folder that we created called test and once you do that you can click on add asset library and we can call this test prims okay and once we have that as test prims we can go in and save the preferences bring this all the way down click and drag to create another viewport and then we can convert this to asset browser. So once we do that, you would notice that within the current file, we have no assets, but then if we click on the drop down, you'd notice that we have the text print. So I think I made a typo. Let's go back and we can call this test print. Okay. And then come back, test prints, and then you have it. So in this case, you now have an endless supply of rocks that you can use and we can throw in some more some more and also some more and this can help you start creating things even faster and for sure if you would like to you know play with the light you can also drag in a set of lights that you might want to work with and then if you would also like to play with the textures or maybe the materials that you've made you can also click and drag and drop these materials on now something that makes a lot of sense that i do like about the new update to the asset browser or the new release of the asset browser is the idea that you actually have these things that understands surface so they just make sense you know the fact that you have this uh, understand surface just makes a lot of sense because at any point in time you're dragging things in let's say i'm dragging this you can see it knows that this is a surface and it places it right on top of that surface so i can also just go ahead and get rid of these ones and uh, we can bring in some brand new ones i can just click and drag click and drag and you can see it just simply positions itself and it also snaps on existing asset surfaces. And this, by a long shot, makes a lot of sense and it will save you a lot of time depending on what you're creating. So this is more like it for those who like to also add up the previous one that we looked at, which is from the folks at Blender Foundation. You can also go over to the section, click on the plus sign, find the folder where it's been saved and click on add asset library. And in this case, I can also call this cube and press the enter key. And also make sure that you save your preferences. And if we go all the way down, we can have that cube right here. And from there, we can pick up a list of textures and materials that exist and use them. So you can mix and match several things together and use them to your liking. So this is more like it. For those who like to explore with something like this, maybe you want to test it out, see how it works. Link to this is going to be in the description. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.